We're going to be going to our Abuja correspondent so that we can take a look at exactly what's happening as Muslim faithfuls are celebrating the Id that's today. Um, so let's, let's uh, get a feel of exactly what the celebrations are like, especially from our Abuja correspondent here. We have Joshua Imarai, he's on yeah, standby. There we go. There we go. Joshua, Joshua how are you doing? A very good morning to you. Uh, eat greetings from Abuja here, Mazino. And, Great. Uh, Judith, of course, thank you. Yeah, Joshua, I know that the, the, the mood is very celebratory, so to speak, and with everyone in their Eid fits and their nice, you know, colorful outfits. Uh, but tell us, you are at the, live at the park in Abuja, uh, ahead of prayers, Eid prayers for today to really kick off the celebration, which is going to be a long weekend, by the way. Uh, talk to us, what, what's going on so far? Well, Abuja is, is packed with beautiful abayas and jalabias from Muslim faithful across, across Abuja as they congregated in the national mosques in Abuja. The, the event kick started in a rainy note as uh, the prayers that were supposed to happen in the Eid ground was moved down to the National Mosque. And uh, the, the prayer kit started with um, the chief Imam, Sheikh uh, Megari, leading the prayers. And he urged Muslim faithful around Abuja and the environs to, uh, to um, uphold a spirit of sacrifice, understanding the essence of this very season that uh, uh, the, 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 beloved, the beloved one sacrificed a ram in place of his son. And this is, this is um, something that is, is it's quite understanding in, in, in the current Nigerian state as uh, everyone is being urged to uphold the spirit of sacrifice. I mean, I can see behind you there, everyone is dressed very it's nicely. Very colorful. Very actually. colorful. I, I wish indeed. I was there. I, I, I <laughs> love what it looks I like. I really miss the North for, for when it comes to Eid celebrations. The fit is always impeccable. But, you know, speaking of, you know, uh, you know the past and also present and sacrifice, we know that there's so much going on economically, you know, in our it's tough times, the prices of food is high. And I know we've seen news, uh, headline news of the prices of ram as well. Uh, but how is the celebration like? Is it different from past years? Is it, are people still trying, you know, and making sacrifices when it comes to their pockets and just to make sure that today happens? I can say for sure to you is that Nigerians are not, are not reducing the standard when it comes to celebration. Uh, I, when you go across the street of Abuja, you could perceive the, uh, the aroma of, of ram being slaughtered and roasted on the fire. It shows you that Nigerians are not relenting, particularly Muslim faithful are not relenting to celebrate this period of Eid Kabir. And they are, they, they are going all out, considering the economic situation of Nigeria, Considering the current realities of Nigeria, I don't see that. I don't think they, they are seeing that as a deterrent to stop them from celebrating. They are in, a, in an ever happy mode in, in Abuja here. And I can tell you for sure that considering the current realities of the market, considering the economic challenges, Nigerians here in Abuja are not relenting. They are not stopping. The celebration is sparked and everyone is coming out beautiful and ready for the Eid celebration. Oh, we're stuck in here, so we're not sure exactly what it's like out there in Lagos, but we're definitely going to go out and check ourselves. But um, I don't know, Joshua, if you can do us a favor. If there's anybody around there, any uh, uh, buddy celebrating the Eid around there that you could call on camera, and we could ask them specifically or, or individually um, how they foresee their Eid going, that would really appreciate that. Uh, I'm only asking this because <laughs> I, I, want to get a, I want to get individuals who are you know, celebrating to actually tell yeah. us whether there's a difference, a marked difference between this year and last year. Also, uh, well, you know me, I'm a fashion head, so I want to look at their looks as well. Yeah, their we also want to well. see all of that. <laughs> I want to see their fits as well. The, the fits how, how nicely they're looking, you know, the fits. So, so we're hoping, Joshua. We're hoping Joshua will be able to get someone on camera so we can talk to them or at least if he can ask them exactly. Joshua, do you have somebody now? Do you have anybody now that we could talk to? We are trying to walk towards getting somebody. Okay. We are speaking to persons now. Okay, that's great. So let's talk security. Now, Abuja is, of course, you know, the center of Nigeria, and I mean that not just geographically, but since it's also the um, um, helm of affairs, where the helm of affairs are. When it comes to security, uh, what's it like there, um, especially that the presidency has asked all agencies to make sure that there's a secure celebration this year? Are people confident? Uh, we understand that the current security challenge of the country now. And I, one thing I know for sure is uh, the Abuja is, is secure. We are coming into the entrance of the Abuja Mosque today. I, 
One thing that, that was worth noting is that the presence of heavy security men. We could see the heavy security presence in Abuja here. And uh, what welcomed us into this mosque is uh, a very, very huge uh, armored tank standing with stand, standby, standby to take every security measures. Now, and gaining entrance into the mosque, uh, we, we met quite uh, an amount of security persons who were making checks to ensure that um, no other persons who are here with um, ulterior motives gain access into the National Mosque. And uh, uh, across Abuja and the Everon, from the airport road down to the city centre, we could see security men stationed. We could see road safety men stationed. Um, not, notwithstanding the part of traffic also, I think precautionary measures have been put in place to ensure that the, the celebration is experienced with a smooth flow. Speaking of traffic, by the way, um, we also know that there have been traffic interstate, interstate between Kaduna and Abuja. Can you speak on that as well? Uh, did you meet people who were traveling into town to celebrate or traveling in or out of the, uh, the state to celebrate? Morning, uh, the, the passage of vehicles into the city center was, I think it was scarce. The, the vehicles that gained access into the uh, city center, they were limited. I, 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 I think it is basically because of some of them are finding um, their way with their legs down to the eat ground. But unfortunately, the rain hampered these plants and we could see an amount of them turning in, turning down to the city center, particularly the Abuja Mosque, to say their prayers. Uh, you know, it, um, one thing I understand today is that as many Muslim faithful who saw their counterpart or coalesce coming down to the um, Abuja Central Mosque, they, they helped some of them and some of them conveyed some of them here to this venue. So the, the traffic situation in Abuja is not, that, uh, is not that heavy, as I would say. It's not heavy. We are experiencing smooth flows of vehicles throw and fall to the city center. Oh, nice one, Joshua. I appreciate you for doing that. I, I could keep watching you just to look at all the activities at the back there, from people carrying their balloons and, you know, families with their children. I just love everyday life in Nigeria and, and people watching. But again, M Joshua, many thanks. Thank I know you, that uh, later on you'll be stuffing your face with uh, salad meat. I know that I am envious of you. Thank you very much, Joshua. The most. That is the most.